I just got the new uh, infotainment uh, touchscreen system for my uh, wife's Honda Accord. Here's the box it came in, and we're unboxing the unit right now. It came very well packaged and protected in big bubble wrap. It had instructions, which um, I was glad to see. A little wiring diagram on the back for the back connectors. It's got all the cables to hook it up to uh, Honda Accord. So I wanted to test it on the bench before I put it in the car because it's quite a bit of work to put these in the car. So it comes with this little plate where you move a screen from the top down to the to the bottom cubby hole in the in the dash. And it even came with a little bag of screws. I've seen a lot of time where people complain that there's no screws uh, and I got a, a little bag of screws but there's only six of them it wasn't that big of a deal I you actually need about a dozen to put this whole thing together so we've got all kinds of cables and connectors these are the main cables for that go into the Honda after you take the OEM radio out you're tapping into that radio and you're gonna keep the OEM radio this is just going to be a screen that basically uh, connects doubles up although this thing does have an amp in it and audio outs that you can you could use uh, a set of speakers and this is the cable that connects so you can move the little screen the little LCD screen from the from the top of the car as you can see in this picture that that little screen gets moved down near the in the cubby hole near the shifter and then the the new screen goes up top. It's a pretty nifty setup the way they do it. So like I said, I wanted to bench test this thing and make sure it was all working. And to do that, I dug out an old computer power supply. Power supply supplies 12 volts on the yellow rail, 5 volts on the red, and the black is ground. Yellow, 12 volts. Black, ground, red, 5 volts. There's a plug that goes on the back, and this is the main power plug. And there's a red, a yellow, and a black wire. I had to connect the GPS antenna, which is this wire over here, to get the maps working, but they work. I got Waze installed, which I like better. I checked the GPS signal in the settings. It, it was connecting to several satellites, so I know it's working. So there's Waze. Here's Apple CarPlay. Just wanted to double check and make sure that that worked. And that's about that's about all uh, I wanted to do on the unit out of the car. I'm going to do a video on how to install it in a Honda Accord, 8th generation Accord. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to install CarPlay and 
a 10 inch screen in my wife's 2012 Honda Accord. First thing I'm going to do is we need to remove a few panels, plastic panels, in the console and on the dash trim. I've covered up the, the leather seats. I don't want to risk damage. And I've got uh, a cover for the shifter knob. I don't want to risk damaging that. So, a nice little trick that I learned is you can pop this little piece out of the shifter. And then with a screwdriver you can release the shift lever without turning the car on. So I can just press down with a screwdriver and after putting on the emergency brake I can release the shift lever. Uh, and that makes working on all of this stuff up here a lot easier. So I'm going to remove this trim piece. Use this, one of these type of tools here so you don't damage anything. And you just go around, all the way around, and then this piece lifts up. And if it has heated seats, you have to undo the, unclip the wires, and unclip the wires for the 12 volt socket. That plug comes out. The plug on this side comes out plug for the 12 volt socket comes out and then this piece can go in the back seat. Here's the plug for the uh, 12 volt socket. I use these plastic clip tools. They're readily available. They're inexpensive but they really help when removing dash trim pieces and re removing stuff like this center console. So over here we have this second piece of trim that we have to remove using your tool and it comes off and this goes in the back seat. Then we have another piece of trim over here on this side that has to come off the same way it's held in with plastic clips and it goes in the back seat. The next step is to remove this cubby hole here, this cubby uh, thing. It's just a holder for stuff and it's going to not be used. It's not going to be reused. We're moving the screen up top down down here. There's four screws. One, two, and then two underneath. Underneath. And then this thing comes out. It's kind of tricky. You have to you have to maneuver it just right in order to get it to slide out. It has to come out at just the right angle. It's a tight, tight fit. Okay, we've got the cubby out. And like I said, we're not going to reuse this. And this goes in the back seat. The next step 
is to remove the OEM radio. There's a screw here and a screw here. As you can see, I've already taken those two screws out. They're just Phillips screws. And then underneath there's two screws here. They're Phil either Phillip, combination Phillips or 8 millimeter uh, socket size. And you have to unscrew them. And those are the four main screws holding this massive radio in. And then the rest of it is just clips. And you can use your tool to pop these clips loose without damaging any of the trim. So we've got the OEM radio popped out. I haven't disconnected any of the wires behind behind it yet. My next step is we have to install a wire from the auxiliary input in the back of the console in order to use the amplifier and sound from the original radio which also means that we get to keep the CD player in the original radio and we're going to be using the FM, AM, etc. from the original radio. We're going to be using the auxiliary which is what this powers the auxiliary input for sound from the new head unit, from the new 10 inch touchscreen unit. Because that unit does come with an FM radio, but this way I'm still hooked up to the original antenna from the car and the original power sources from the car. Plus my wife does like to still listen to CDs even though CDs are passe, they're on the way out now. So I'm popping this back cover off of the back of the console so I can get access to the plug, the jack. And I like the way these plastic tools allow you to get these plastic clips, loosen these plastic clips, and take pieces of trim off without damaging anything. You run the plug all the way. I drilled a little hole here so that I could go down under, around the back, and then come through here. To run that this cable all the way to the front. So here's the original small screen. Four screws unscrews it and then four screws in the back. This gray cover pops off and here's the original little screen and there's four screws holding it in you just unscrew them and it comes out and just be super careful with this thing you don't want to scratch it or you and you don't want to bend it or break it I pop this little piece of plastic window in the new cubbyhole unit I've taped it in there with a, a, a thin strip of tape, black electrical tape, so it doesn't fall out. 
Now I'm going to reassemble this. This is taking this out of the original four screws, taking it out of the original housing, and putting it in here. A little trick I learned from uh, my friend on the internet who has also done this install is that the light on this new housing, the back light from this, will bleed through and it looks bad. So what he did and what I'm going to do is I put black tape around the edges where that light bleeds through to obscure it, to cover it up. So I've transferred the little mini screen into the new housing with four screws and then I've got the back cover. Uh, to put on. Now I noticed that on my unit the plug is is recessed pretty deep into the and the original housing was 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 shorter it had a, a better access to the plug so I actually had to cut out part of the otherwise the cable wouldn't wouldn't reach it's it, the cables they provide are really ridiculous. They're so short. The actual audio cable uh, with the one-eighth on one end and the RCA on the other end, the, the, what they sent me was too short. I had to use a cable that I had that, that was longer. I got the back cover screwed on, just four screws, and the access to the plug. The secret to these head units is having USB access. And they give you USB plugs that go in the back of the head unit. And they're they're pretty long. You could put them in the in the glove box and just have them hanging loose in the glove box. But this is my wife's car and she doesn't she, she's not going to be bothered, you know, opening the glove box and plugging in her iPhone or whatever. So I just bought this little extension cable and it came with a little mounting bracket. I put it in the cubby hole. I drilled a hole on the back so the cables would come out. And then I'm going to connect these to the USB wires from the head unit, from the back of the head unit. This is the back cover that goes on the unit. It screws in there with five screws. And it goes on the back like this. And then there's two clips, one that go here and here, that I have to, that we take off the old unit and transfer over to here. These are the clips. that we have to pop off this old housing for the LCD screen. The clips pop off and we put them on here. My next step is to reinstall all this stuff, put the wiring in. The last step will be mounting the head unit. The next step is to wire the new unit up. These are the RCA connections for 
sound for audio. They go to audio left out, audio right out on this main plug here. This here is for the fan connection. Over here we have our two USB plugs. And like I said, USB is really the secret to these head units. That's where you plug your app, Apple phone in or Android phone in for CarPlay and it's where you put in your USB sticks and all of that so that you can play videos and you can play music. And uh, this thing also has a built-in FM tuner which uh, I have a, an antenna on the way. This, of course this thing doesn't include an FM antenna. This unit does come with a GPS antenna. It hooks up here on the back of the head unit and it has double-sided tape on it and I put it way way back as far as I could up against plastic not against any metal no metal around it plastic hopefully I'm gonna get a good GPS signal down here I've tied all the wires together the ones that go down to the back of the old head unit and there's a cable down here this is the one that plugs into that little that little screen And then these are the two USB that I'm going to hook up. In the back of the head unit is your main power plug right here. This is it, your main power plug. And it goes down to the back of the old stereo CD player unit and plugs into the back of it and then it plugs into the harness coming up here. It just basically what it's doing is this head unit is grabbing power and other inputs from this head unit and it's sending speaker from the head unit to this old radio. So basically we're using all the functions of the old radio, FM, AM, CD player, and when we want sound from the new head unit, we're going to be using the auxiliary input. I think this is kind of the best of both worlds. This unit here had a, uh, I think it was 180 watt amp in it. It powers six speakers very well, and all of those speaker connections are already hooked up. Don't have to worry about any of that. And we don't lose the CD player. As I said, my wife still likes to play her CDs. You just push the whole unit in, line up the slots, push it in. Then you have this original unit just sort of resting in its slots ready to ready to be pushed in and once everything is secure and you're sure that you're good with the install pop this unit all the way back in and then remember at the beginning I showed you the two screws that were behind this unit here behind the cubby and they screw, screwed up. You need to put those in and then I haven't done it yet but you need to put in the two side screws. Then the next final step is connecting your USB cables. Finally we reinstall this insert that goes in the center console and we put our dash trim pieces back in. 
the first thing I wanted to double check was GPS. I wanted to make sure that that antenna wasn't blocked and that the device is getting good GPS signals. The Waze app is has got me positioned at my house. I've finished the install of this head unit, this new touch screen, and I'm pretty satisfied with it. It works pretty well. As you can see right now, I'm on the FM radio. Everything from the original radio still works. And when I want to switch to sound from the head unit, from the new touch screen, I'm simply pushing the auxiliary button. And we're getting sound from the, this USB flash drive that I've put in. This is the home screen and I like this setup. It's a split screen. The There's a few key applications date and time, the music player, and the Waze app. And I like this setup. I like this home screen. I set up a few of the steering wheel buttons. Volume down. Volume up. And mute. This button is going to be for answering the phone. I haven't set it up yet. Back to the home screen. I'm going to show you some of the apps on this uh, head unit. That's Google Maps, and I've installed Waze, YouTube came with it, and I put Video Land VLC player on it. Here's the settings. I'm going to check the device. I'm going to check the system. About the device. And as you can see, this thing came with Android 12. I like wireless Apple CarPlay. You don't have to use a cumbersome setup with a cable. It just works. And there's the all of the apps that you can use with CarPlay. And back to the home screen and playing music. The reverse camera works. And it's actually a pretty good, pretty wide view. And it's got guidelines. This is a video that came with the head unit just to show us how nice the screen is.
I guess it's giving us a, a tour of some nice landmarks in China. And then back to the home screen. So I have a bunch of movies and a bunch of videos loaded up on this USB flash drive, but I'm not going to show them. I don't want to get flagged for copyright infringement on, on the internet. I really like this head unit and touch screen. It's a game changer really, for, especially for long trips. And it's going to make a big difference in terms of navigation and entertainment while we're traveling.